the ovens. Not a lot of wind here compared to over there. As you can see, there's fishing rod holes everywhere. This is like a really good spot to fish. But you have to have the right gear. The ovens, the place that Torben normally goes when he comes to Steep Point and goes fishing. He's been here many times and he has caught some decent sized fish here, but it doesn't always happen. The latest mod to the cruiser. I modified my awning. By the time we started fishing, it was pretty close to sunset, so we only got about an hour and a half, maybe a bit more in. Not even a single bite. So it was time to head back, get to camp, get dinner ready, and then get ready for a big day tomorrow, because tomorrow is barge day. We are going to Dirk Hartog Island. So, I have a bit of a surprise for the boys, and I wanted to do this last night, but we couldn't because we ended up in camp today, <laughs> after midnight. So tonight, I want to do it. Let's go over. I know they're planning chicken, but so what I wanted to give them for dinner, we're going to do as an entree. But there's, you know, there's six of us here. You can count the whole crew in. So it, it'll, you know. Anyway, you'll see what it is. But come over. Bars open. Oh, the first to go. First to go, bars open. So when do you reckon we'll have dinner? Probably about two hours because the chicken's a bit frozen still. Hey. Okay. Well, you used to oh. a late dinner, aren't you? Yeah. yeah. Right. Oh, so I'm not complaining, I just wanted to know. Um, even if it was an hour, we're still doing what I'm about to do. I'm going to go off and I'm going to get us, get us some bush tucker. Cool. Okay. Surprise okay. bush tucker. <laughs> I don't like how you're pointing yeah. over there because the only thing over there is a long drop. <laughs> <laughs> we'll go that way a bit. Okay. Grow, okay. grow run along so <laughs> um, I'm gonna I'm gonna give you some bush tucker. You guys have no idea what, what's gonna happen, but I'll get some bush tucker. I'll be back. Alright? I'm gonna get uh, get a nice feed for all of us. It's gonna be a bit unusual, especially for where we are. But wait and see. Okay. Alright? Yeah, you into it? Yeah, oh, yeah. We'll, 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 <laughs> yeah. as, long as, as long as you eat it as well. I'll definitely eat it. Okay, well then that's I'll, okay. I'll, well, I'll, you I'll, eat chicken's feet and scorpions, <laughs> so I'm a bit concerned. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have the first bite, okay? If you don't want to, you don't have to. I oh, know, no, if you yeah. take the first bite, I'm in. Okay. Yeah. Righto, so I told the boys, look for some bush tucker. And that's what we're doing. We've got to get enough for them. Let's just have a look around. Oh, this might be a good spot down here. Down here. Yeah, yeah. All right, hold up there. I see something. You know what? Stuff that. Let's just go. Let's just go to the drive through. 500 k's from anywhere. I'll show you the bush drive through. Alright. 
lights. I don't know exactly where to go. You just gotta know where to look. Aha, here we go. Good night, mate. Hey, welcome to Steep Point. How can I take your order? Um, I reckon um, make Angus meal. Yep, yep. Just regular size. Not a problem. Um, quarter pounder. We can do that. Can I get? I know it's a bit late in the day, but can I get a bacon egg muffin? Yeah, I think we can do that for you. All right, awesome. All right, not All a right. problem. Cheers, bud. Thank you very much. No worries, mate. Have a good night. You too. Cheers, buddy. That worked too hard. Nice and cold. Go. <laughs> hey, guys. What have you got? What have I got? <laughs> hey, Rhonda. You're going to want to do this for now. Uh, mate, you, you are going to love this. I didn't worry. <laughs> Alright. <But>, okay. <laughs> I know you're concerned. Because it's how far away from your Bacon's? Yeah. Okay. It smells like bacon. That's a bacon egg and muffin. That's a quarter <laughs> pounder. Right? We'll open it up in a sec. That is some fries. And this is a big Ooh, an Angus burger. Now we'll start with this one because this one's intact. All the corrugation stuff we've been on. Right, so <laughs> this is from Tasmania by the way. This is from McDonald's in Tasmania. AJ, you're a bloody legend, campus pantry. I asked him if he could freeze dry some McDonald's. <laughs> this is a freeze dry quarter, quarter pounder. Get my hands clean. <laughs> Alright, so we're going to have to try and eat that somehow. Um, this one didn't quite survive. Oh. But you can see it's all freeze dry. Okay. Um, but we can control the chip. Start with chip. Now, what we're meant to do with this is put it in a steamer. This will come back to life because freeze, freeze dry takes out all the all the moisture, but it, it remains like this. Oh. We got a bite of this. Yeah. You need, you need water. <laughs> We're gonna need the water. Oh, I've got lots of spit. <laughs> this is really messed up. <laughs> mm. It tastes like a quarter pounder. Go on, smash it. <laughs> oh, jeez. How old is this? Two months. Mm. If it's sealed in that bag, it's supposed to be able to last for 25 years. Wow. To American standards, but in Australian standards, you can only go for two years. That's Pretty cool, hey? It's a little bit funky, isn't it? Here's a bit of moisture. Here's a bacon egg and muffin. Check out that one. <laughs> Try that. Yeah, yeah. Jesus. Mmm, <laughs> two month old French fries. Oh. Yeah, I'll give it a crack. So, AJ, your bloody legend from Campus Pantry. Uh, it's similar way to this is made, the, the freeze dry stuff. We'll try this out tomorrow. I've had this before. It's pretty damn good um, for freeze dry stuff. So with this one, all you add is cold water. Whereas uh, most of the others, you add hot water, leave it for like 10, 20 minutes. Some of them are good, some of them are okay. Um, the best one I've had is, uh, which one was that? That was the beef teriyaki. But this one's not too bad either. This is like a, a snack. Let me just serve this one. So this doesn't say. It's about 6 a.m. Friday morning. The wind was pretty bad last night. Um, wind gusts are still up there now. And the wind has swung around, so now it's coming from the east. Um, so hopefully once the sun has risen, the wind dies off. If it's too windy and too choppy, 
they usually cancel the barge because it's too dangerous but I'm pretty sure it's going to come this morning so we'll just wait and see we'll pack up get ready and um, actually I think that's that's the barge right there Ready for the barge, mate? Yeah, man, that was a quick uh, wake up. Yeah, it was a quick wake up, wasn't it? <laughs> I kept hitting the snooze button because I heard the wind, so I thought he wouldn't start this early. Yeah. But uh, here he comes. It's actually very fast, eh? What's that? You, might have, you might have to back up, back up out of the way. Awesome. That is sick. Wayne is now on his way and he'll be back shortly with the barge again to give us a hand with the boat and whatnot. It was a bit of a chaotic morning for us due to us not being prepared in the morning. Most of the crew slept in, the winds and the swell kept changing so the barge had to keep picking different spots to drop people off and pick people up. The boat trailer and Torbers Land Cruiser can just fit on the barge but without the boat on board. So That's the fair. boat needs to go across on its own. Waiting for the barge to come across. Ronnie's cruiser behind me with the Patriot. Um, you see the island over there in the background. And just off to uh, probably your left as you're looking at this is where Ronnie's floating around in the boat following the barge. Here we go, let's not embarrass myself and get bogged before I'm even on.
ground brakes on. It moves around a fair bit, eh? Yeah. Definitely check the suspension. <laughs> Well, for you people that get seasick, like me, probably not a good idea to take the barge on a day like today. <laughs> yeah, well. Uh, Mark's back there, but I think Ronnie's going across so he can put the car on. back there Torbs, let's see what this is like before we come through. I'm already through, there's no way of turning around where I am. Copy that. So the idea was to get out of the wind and have a nice warm and calm weather breakfast. However, this turned out to be a bad idea and we should have stayed where we were. Look, he does actually work. Hi, hi, hi. <laughs> tracks out we are missing three of them and this is taking a long time Now in case you're wondering where Travis was during this whole time, he wasn't feeling very good so he was having a bit of a nap in his car. Breakfast cost us a bit of time. 
So we got the boat back, hooked up, covers on, we're out to Louisa Bay. The weather report is not good, but uh, Louisa Bay may be the only protection we're going to get from the wind for the time being, for the next couple of days. But after that, it's only 10, 15 knot per hour winds, so we should be good then. So it might be a bit land based to start with, um, but we're going to try and get the boat in and Get a nice mix for ourselves, do a bit of fishing and do a bit of afternoon driving. We'll just see what the weather does. That's where we're at the mercy of the weather. But the main thing is we're all on the island and uh, we won't be in the mainland until the 13th, which is eight days from now. Eight days on the island. Woo! driven about a third of 48 kilometers. You can work that out because I can't work that out right now. I'm a bit, a bit frazzled from this morning. We are at Dirk Hartog Eco Lodge, I guess it is. Um, I presume I'm going the right way unless I miss the track. Yep, here goes past. The homestead's pretty big actually. So this is a homestead as well, Dirk Hartog homestead. So they used to have a lot of sheep and stuff in here, but they're now trying to get this this place back to like the 1616. 16, 16. So in the 1600s, 1616, that's what they're trying to bring it all back to. That's their motto at the moment. So all feral cats, feral dogs, all introduced species to this island are currently being eradicated. So it can return to its native, well, its native way that it was. Pretty cool. We've come along the island and come across the uh, homestead where the uh, caretakers are living. And uh, you can see how the whole place is self-sustainable, which is pretty cool to see. So we were talking to the uh, caretaker on the barge and he was saying that uh, they rarely get any time off over here because they're continuously maintaining things like the solar panels and windmills and and the water bores and everything so I guess it's not all fun and games but with the view that like we've got out in front of the windscreen even work would be a pleasure
it's been a very long day since this morning. The barge was early, then we got bogged once we got to the other side, and we've been driving all day because that boat had to be nursed in. So Torben has done a pretty impressive job. Everything's intact. Here we are at Louisa Bay, and we are caught out by soft sand down the bottom. We were expecting hard packed all the way to an easy to find campsite. We don't even know where camp is yet. So we are just driving around because we don't want to stop. Once we stop, that boat trailer is going to sink Torben right down. I don't know, so as you can see, Torben's bugged again. <laughs> That's because he's got the boat on the back. But instead of uh, keep recovering him, we've pretty much left him here. And the other boys have gone for a bit of a scout to find a camp. So apparently they have found a really, really cool one out of the wind. We can launch the boat. So it's going to be perfect. So now we can focus on getting the boat out. Decision has been made. We're going to drop the trailer off here, go back, drop off the boat, anchor it up a bit further down the beach. There's too many rocks around here. And uh, then tell the other boys what's going on because they're still down there. After we recover my car. After we recover the car, yeah. <laughs> Guys, what we've done is we just shortened the, the snatch strap. We want a little bit of stretch in it, but it's, we're using it more for towing. We haven't put a blanket on it because he's not bogged. We're just a tow assisting, pretty much. The blanket's just going to get in the way. It's going to go out of the car or whatever. So they're going to go around my cruiser, back up over there, line it up to the exit track, and then Torben's then going to reverse down with the boat and launch the boat. That's the plan. Finally, we're unloading the boat and we're going to put it into the water and we are going to stay here for two nights. The boat will be in the water for two nights and we can finally use the boat. So looking forward to this. It's clear, it's good. Okay, you have hard ground now, the trailer. But there's one little problem here. We are at low tide. And this bay is super low as it is. We are bottoming out. <laughs> Remember the old thick proper flano? We have a discussion here about flannels. <laughs> Why don't people make a good flannel anymore? That is nice and thick, eh? Yeah. Yeah, they make it. They're all thin now. Yeah. They're all like your your Gen Y. Why Gen Y? Gen Jeez, Y. Don't we sound old? Gen yeah. X. Bring back the nineteen nineties flannels. Bring back the nineteen nineties parachute pants. And I'll bring back the mullet. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right, we're trying something new out here. I bought this a couple of trips ago, never got to use it. It's a mozzie coil thing, and I can't get this thing to work. Oh, hang on, look, it's instructions. Well, I've got it on. If you're wondering where, where everyone else is, there is a reception at the top of the hill. So let's just dob everyone in here. They're gone. To talk to their loved ones. Oh, it's on. 
It's on. Yeah, it's on. I can see there. It's on. Yeah, it's oh, on. Cool. Yeah, it's probably on the whole time. You can see the flame in there. It's on. This is a mozzie mosquito repellent to the device. There are a few sand flies around. We've been bit. You've been bitten on the feet too, haven't you? Yeah. Twenty-one square meter zone, apparently. There you go. So we've got a mozzie shield and we've got a shark shield. We actually do have a shark shield. We're going to test it out tomorrow. Um, let me head out. So we're going to do some trawl trawling tomorrow. Yeah, get some mackies. So we're hoping that high tide is when we depart the uh, bay here because there's <laughs> three sandbars that just kept hitting. It's pretty much set up. All, all I have to do is pop four latches and I'm in the uh, James Baru. Sounds French. It does sound French. Wee oui, wee. Oui. Um, <laughs> we should have a look at your new setup here, Torps. Can't see much at the moment. Is that the one that's got the writing on it? Bloody hell, Mr. Fancy Pants. <laughs> well, I wire up houses fancy, so why can't I wire up my car fancy? Yeah, true, true. Yeah, right. I haven't actually had a proper look at this yet. Awesome. Is that the one that's got your name on it? No, the other side does, this one. Oh, that's right, I've seen this one. That's, a, that's <laughs> the necessities. Soda stream and jacks. Nice. All right, let's have a look at the other side. He, he's gone an extra mile on his side. Actually, I'm gonna say a big thanks to Chris. This was his idea. Little bear. Well, for this weekend, few fins that have moved on the corrugations. Nice. So this weekend it's a bar and storage, but it's a lockbox pretty much. Yep. And we won't go into what it is for. It's a lockbox. Yes. Keep Wayne out. Yes. Aha. Uh -huh. That's my little pigeon hole. Charging your phone? Charging phones. It runs a second fridge. Oh, nice no, sticker, mate. Yep. Yep. I've, I've got some plans for this section. Oh, yeah? Okay. So. Cool. Actually, I reckon we probably should go into too much because we got a modifier coming up for you. Yeah. But we haven't really gone into detail anyway. But. Or what if we ask the people watching if there's anybody out there that can do this, but. I'm looking for white sticker of Australia. Oh, yeah, but the we're... rest of the world stretched out in smaller. Yeah, okay, interesting. Let's suss out what we're doing for dinner because I don't think anyone's talked about that yet. Pork roast, I Is it? Pork I roast? Think, I think so. Should we just do it and they yeah. come back down and they're like, what are we having for dinner? We'll just say, we don't know. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Fishing, uh, mainly trawling. We might drop a few bait lines in, got some crabs, crab legs last night. There we go. Ladies and gents, just a quick apology for the audio quality for the rest of this episode. I had a microphone end up in the water and I didn't know about it till afterwards. At this stage of my entire boating life, I only have about 20 hours of skipper time. So Travis, 
who is a very experienced skipper, is giving me a lot of advice during this trip. What's up, mate? I said they're not bad shoes, Grandad. Mate. You wouldn't get in the water yesterday because of stonefish. I, I did get in the water, then you said to me, oh, there's stonefish here. And you're like, oh, do you want to put the anchor out? And I'm like, oh, that's a cool move. <laughs> They're reef sandals. They have wire mesh under them. How you going, Torbs? Good. Living the life. It's actually really good seat. This is small. I knew I should have put that one on mine. You slimy mackerel. <laughs> See? Slimy. Get a little grunt for a little fella. Wowie mackerel. Just undersized mackerel, so we couldn't even keep him for bait. So off the little fella goes. This morning's fishing run was pretty non-eventful, however I gained a lot of experience today and got used to the boat. So we've just uh, come back into the shore, unloaded everything in the shallow, we're just going to adjust the ropes, uh, 
the anchor at the front and the shore line we've got here and pull it out so when the tide goes low we don't end up on the bottom. What are you buying? What are we making? Um, ham, cheese, wraps, swoop, jalapenos, jalapenos, and cucumber sauce, spice. So, so you got spice, spice, and spice. Love it. First spice it up, eh? <laughs> we're out trolling again. We're trolling, sorry. We're gonna go trolling. <laughs> we're gonna go. Over here do some splitting where we were before, we found a nice seaweed patch, some seagrass. Um, we got a line of rod out, and we got a real line of rod out here. So we'll see if we can get some squid for tonight. Now we've got two dishes we're cooking on this trip that require squid, so pressure's on. Corbin's back at camp, we got Travis back on the boat, and just behind us, 